Hey there everyone, this is Tricia with Easy E-Mini Trade and I wanted to go over a technique you can use for doing range trades when you find yourself in a very sideways market and it is risky but um, I'll show you how you can take a little bit of the risk out but no matter what when you do range trades they're risky when you're buying at support selling at resistance um, because at some point obviously price is going to break out or break down so that's what makes it risky because at any time that range could be broken but here's a little trick that you might find helpful for timing a range trade so this is a two minute chart um, on the NQ and this was yesterday morning the 9th of April and this was um, the open at 930 and then you can see that we're going back and forth in a pretty um, big range actually but we have news at um, 10 o'clock and we had the petroleum status report at 1030 so what I'm about to show you you don't want to do when you have um, a lot of volume coming in like first thing in the morning or the end of the day and you definitely don't want to do something like a range trade around the report um, being released so just keep that in mind okay this is meant for a quiet market when you're just kind of chopping sideways with um, like when you look at this two-minute chart, you know, after we had crude come out, here you can just see all these overlapping bars just back and forth, each bar overlapping um, each other. So that's a good indication of sideways chop. And most of the time when traders trade in that type of environment, they find themselves getting eaten alive because they're trying to take a buy up at um, the area of resistance and then they're trying to take a a sell at the area of support expecting those areas to break and they never break so here's something that you can do um, off of a half point range chart on the NQ what I do is um, I take the counter channel from my one point range chart and what I do is I overlay it onto my half point range chart so this counter channel is actually from a four tick range chart a one point range chart on the NQ and this is a half point range chart now you could only get away with using a half point range chart on the NQ when things are quiet you could never get away with that um, you know when we have a lot of price action going on and a lot of movement and you'll be able to tell the difference just by how price is quickly moving so you can put your Keltner channel on here from your one point range chart and the setting that I use on those are um, 20 and 20.4 you can use 22 and and 2 as the deviation um, either will work and you don't need to have the MACD on there this is the stochastic and my settings on that is um, are 14 3 and 3 and I like overbought and oversold at 80 and 20 and some people like 70 30 whatever you like so what I'm watching for is and you don't have to keep this chart up because if you use the one-point range chart for your entries you'll be able to see when price is hitting the, the top or lower band of the counter channel so here you can see price comes up hits the and you could you know even have done it here um, this is a good one as well right here let me just draw this here. Where's my vertical line? Here we go. Okay. So here you can see on the stochastic we've got some divergence. We've got equal lows in price. We've got higher low here than here on the stochastic. So that would give us an indication of um, a move to the upside. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to retrace all the way back up to the upper channel, but likely at least for a few bars. So what I watch for is I watch for price to come down to the lower channel and you can see it came out but I'm okay with that as long as once I get my stochastic crossing back above 20 I'm back inside the channel. So once you get that the bar that's forming as you get that stochastic crossing above 20 you put a buy stop in above that bar and then the hope would be that you find your way up to the upper channel then it touches the upper channel and then you watch for the stochastic to cross below 80. 
This is the bar that's forming when that happens. So you put a cell stop in under this bar, and then your hope is that you find your way down to the lower channel. Um, you have a little bit of uh, a retracement back up to that channel, but it never stops you out. And then you find your way back down to the lower channel. Here you are at the lower channel again. You've got some divergence to the downside. Let me just show you this here. I mean, to the upside. We've got lower lows here than here. On the stochastic, you can see that we've got higher low here than here. So that, again, that would lead us to believe we're due for at least a couple bar retracement. So perfect for what we're doing here. We know it's a quiet market. If you look at your um, entry chart and you use the ADX DMI, your DMI on the one point range chart is flatlining under the DMIs and under 20. This is a half point range chart, so you can't really see that. But when you're looking at it on a bigger chart, it's just flatlining under the 20 there. So stochastic cross the back above 20, you put your buy stop above the bar that's forming as you're getting that, and then it triggers you. You're hoping to get back up to the upper channel. It never makes its way there. But likely you're using a, a target of like two points or something. Um, I wouldn't sit there waiting for it to hit the opposite channel because it you know, sometimes doesn't make it. That's a perfect example. But you definitely got your two points out of it. Then you're not looking for anything until we retrace back down to the lower channel or to the upper channel. So here it does finally make its way up there. And you realistically could have sat through all this until you hit the upper channel. You would never have been stopped out. But, you know, long wait. So totally up to you. But two points is all I'm using as a target on that. Then finds its way to the upper channel. Stochastic crosses below 80. And you also have some divergence there. You've got higher highs in price while you've got a lower high here than here on the stochastic. This is the bar that's forming when the stochastic rolls below 80. You put your sell stop under that bar, and then you're looking for price to find its way back down to support of the counter channel. Now here it breaks. Now here's the beauty of using this technique, because you want to make sure that the counter channel is actually being touched. Touch, touch. Even if it comes outside by a couple bars, that's fine. But what you don't want is you don't want to take it thinking, okay, well, it didn't touch the channel, so I'm just going to buy it here instead when the stochastic crosses above 80. You don't want to do that, and this is a perfect example of that. This stochastic, um, excuse me, I meant to say 20, crosses above 20, but you never touch the channel, so you would not be trying to buy this. And that basically saves you from taking this as a range trade buy at support just to be stopped out. Here you can see the stochastic crosses back above 20, but I'm still outside the channel, so I'm not really interested in doing anything with that because by the time it comes back inside the channel, we're already back up to the overbought area, so I'm not interested in that. So now what you would do is you would watch for price to hit and hold the upper channel. So it doesn't quite hit here, but we do have some divergence to the downside, but that would be risky in my opinion until you actually hit the upper channel, which happens here. And you still have some divergence there as well. So you could see here, higher highs in price, lower highs on the stochastic. Stochastic crosses back below 80. Actually, I think I'm off a bar here. I think it's the one before. And then you take a short expecting price to find its way to the lower channel. So a couple things I want to point out. As time goes by and you're just staying, you know, going channel to channel, what's going to eventually happen is that price is going to stop hitting either side of the channel. And also you're going to notice that the channel is going to start getting smaller and smaller. That's when you're done. Just stop. You're done. Because you don't want to keep going and going and going, at some point you are going to break out or break down. Now, you know, yesterday we were um, in anticipation of the FOMC minutes coming out until at, excuse me, at 2 o'clock, so not much really happening until after um, that did come out at 2. But at least that's a way for you to find something to do when there's not a whole lot going on, but I definitely want you to be aware that it is definitely aggressive and can be risky.
Okay, so I hope you find that helpful, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care, you guys.